I have a question for you before you go. What's your story out here? You came from Canada? Yeah. And you did Second City? Yeah. Toronto? Yeah. Then what'd you do? I did kids TV hosting up there too. I don't know. <laughs> What show Walk did you me host? through this. Okay, so Canada's version of like Nickelodeon is called YTV. Yes. It's like youth television, okay? Fun. So I did the host, like the interstitial hosting. Oh, wow. And so did you, where were you at Toronto? Did you main stage it? Were you ETC? Were I you was touring? tour co. And then oh. my green card came through and I le- left to come to America. So you, how, so you did the ride, you did all the classes, you got tour co. Yeah. You were starting, you were going to build up. Was yeah. the dream at that point to get main stage, either go SNL or go Chicago? Uh, At that point, like, None of that was on my radar. I never ever thought that I would move to the States. But then I started seeing people who did main stage move yes. to LA. So then I started putting in my paperwork and I was like on the road to main stage. But then when it came yes. through, I was like, gotta go. You gotta go. Yeah, you gotta yeah, yeah. move within like six months of getting it or you lose it. Yeah. Oh. And did you know you wanted to do this even as a kid? Yeah, but I also used to be a drama teacher in Edmonton, Alberta. You did? <laughs> yeah. So that was kind of like what I thought. I mean, I knew I wanted to do this, but that's not possible in yeah, Edmonton. Yeah, yeah. So then I was like, oh, I'll be a drama teacher. Who did you watch as a kid that you were like, that made you want to perform? Um, Sarah Silverman. Yeah. Uh, like, really? like Sarah Silverman program and uh, like SNL and yeah. everything. And all those like yeah, yeah. wacky ladies. So then you went from there in Edmonton. You went to Toronto. You did the second city. You get to Torco. You then get your thing and you move to Los Angeles. Yeah. And who'd you know in L.A.? What Not was a you? single damn yeah, person. you did the same thing. You, so, you didn't know anyone either? Nobody, yeah. So then you got out here, you knew no one, and what'd you go, how'd you get from zero to something? Did you do Groundlings? I did Groundlings and UCB. And so I, you just started taking classes? Immediately, like it was my job. Yeah. I, d- I did both tracks. And then Groundlings has like a big bottleneck before. Yeah, yeah. you get like a year and a half break for like the writer's thing. Yeah, whatever. yeah. And then so then I really started doing more like Herald Knight and stuff at UCB and Ask. So and UCB like was what kind of launched you through. Which yeah. one went first? UCB definitely interesting because because Groundlings had the bottleneck so then I just like yeah, doubled down at UCB it. and then where'd you get your agent what was the thing God, that this guy's so needy where'd you get an agent how do I get one <laughs> what was... where, but how do I get one <laughs> are <laughs> you sag yeah what's Taft Hartley <laughs> yeah yeah I'm the other one what's not sag but the other one that's what I am it doesn't matter <laughs> Actra Actra <laughs> that's Actra. the Canadian yeah. I just pay that guy uh, so <laughs> what was the thing that got you broke you through in sag no <laughs> <laughs> How'd you get it? Because I did the same arc. I came. So did Garf. We were oh. at the Improv Olympic back when that used to exist. So you guys came here together. So you did have a friend. No, no we, we met each, each other. other at the same Improv Theater. Yeah, where Garrett, uh, Improv Olympic? This was before UCB this is, this was here. This is closed okay, down. I people moved smoke to LA the same week that IO closed. I saw one show there on a, yeah, like a, a Monday, say, and then it was closed by Wednesday. Yes. A lot of people say there's a that one kind of yeah. Impact we when we were when we moved here. I moved here in 2004. Oh, yeah. Garf, when did you get here? Probably like right around then, probably 2004. Uh, UCB was not here yet. It was only New York. I had done it in New York back in like 2000, 2001. But I, it was IO and Groundlings and yes. Second City kind of. But, but Groundlings, like you said, was the one where you were like, yeah, but there's like that bottom. But yeah, also IO yeah. used to be the fun one because there was a bar. You could smoke weed in the green room. You could get that your show the, put up if you gave the guy who run it weed. Yes. You, like that was, the, it was, the, it weed, it was yeah. the party place. You could kind of go there and get started. No oh, fun. Uh, but- Nobody, I did the main stage sketch show there and I was all excited. I had like my head shots and they were like, yep. dude, you're going to get signed. At the end, I went to the person in the box office. We had like 50 things. None were taken. Oh. Yeah. Where you're like, oh, no one's seeing this shit. So what was the thing that kind of got you started? Something I happened. don't know if I've been started. You got if, started for, how'd you get Naomi? Oh, that was, okay, actually- so I was doing Mod, which is the sketch night at UCB, yes, and sure. Herald Team, which is the long, yeah. long form improv. Yep. And um, the all the people with their reps got submitted for the SNL showcase, and then the AD of UCB got to submit two people who were unrepped. Wow. And no so they submitted way. me, and I went and I tested, and every and in the process. Um, my manager was watching in the crowd and then oh wait so that for night S- was the test no it was i went and then then like t- two days later got a call saying like they they want to fly you Jesus to new york like, i could oh, not you believe did it that whole i didn't thing? have a rep i didn't have reps nothing no yeah. did you have to come way. up with all of the things you were going to do in your audition in like two days how oh, ready were you no because I, I had already well i guess i just kind of threw together like a five minutes from all the sketch stuff yeah, that right. i had done I wouldn't say I was like super ready, but that's why I was shocked. Yeah, like, I just right. couldn't believe but that it. Shit's that's cool. crazy. That's the unheard of story. Yeah. How nervous were you? 
so nervous. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'd, and I'd, the vibe in that it. room is crazy, right? Well, it's actually really devastating because I tested, well, twice, but the first time I went there and then like hours before my test got a call because I had done, so now I have a fresh manager, right? Yes. Who had signed me just before I went to Naomi. the actual test. Yes. Okay. And um, she called me and she was like, I'm signing the, the test deal and there's something has come up with a show that you did, some sketch show that you oh, did. Uh, totally unrepped, had been in LA for like not even a year. Oh, so no. of course I was doing all sorts of weird Anything. non-union stuff. Yeah. And this show that I had done that was a sketch TV show, we, I did like a non-airing pilot they presentation. They owned the rights? And they like pulled they the plug on my test. <sighs> Holy shit. So then, That's so then, yeah. That's fucked up. And so what happened? Well, I cried so hard I burst a blood yeah, vessel in my sure. eye and then I flew back. That's a character. <laughs> That's a good character. And then, thank you. And then I tested again the next year. That's fucking nuts. Wait, and then the next year was all new stuff. And then was that was that environment crazy? Was it like yeah, yeah. as yeah. as sterile as we always hear about? I mean, the way the weight in the dressing room was hell, but I thought that the room itself was like pretty warm. That's good. I felt like there was laughing in the room, which is nice. And in my in my dressing room, the TV was uh, turned on to everybody crazy. else's. Could you turn it thing. off? Ugh, it, so no, but scary. it wasn't turned on. But I turned it on, and, and I could, could see everybody else auditioning. Did you watch? Yes. Oh, that's crazy. Did you feel like that helped you? Yeah, because I, you know what? Here's the thing, and this is, this is just my belief. Okay, we're all pretty bad. <laughs> like, I think if you, I think if you're an adult person doing sketch comedy with wigs, you're you're bad. We're all bad. Every, you know, it's everyone's like, sad. It's not it's really it's funny. Not, not embarrassing. It's yeah, the yeah. kind of the most humiliating thing you could do with your adult body. Right. Yeah. So what? It just made me feel so comfortable. It's like we're all just, you know, you hit a level, and there's like. Probably a thousand people that are doing exactly the same kind of work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah no yeah, one's really that. I mean, maybe I once in a blue moon, someone's like better but than the other. Really. But not really. It's just certain, everyone has like opinions about somebody. It's a bit a sad for everyone. Yeah, and have you yeah. watched like the like it's at really Groundlings funny. or UCB the, 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 the like showcase nights before oh, yeah. tests where everybody's going and trying yeah. out their stuff? It's like it all starts to just turn into mashed potatoes. Like everyone's, it's the same thing. <laughs> yeah, 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 no, yeah. that's very true. So you got a sense of calm and then went in there and did a pretty good job. Yeah. Good for you. Did you do it? No, I did. Well, I didn't. My kind of. I was really into sketch and improv, and then I had a night where I'm. I'm. I'm a money guy. I love money. I oh, love the, do you? I love the business. I can't tell by your outfit. That's crazy. Thank you so much for coming. <laughs> <laughs> I don't love spending it. I don't love spending it either. But I love the game of it. Uh huh. My father was a car salesman. My mother was a stained glass junk artist. So like the mix of the two. That is the craziest sentence I've ever. That sounded like the the Doctor Evil monologue from Austin Powers. <laughs> my mother was a well, she made stained glass prostitute named Chloe. <laughs> my father was. <laughs> <laughs> but she had like junk shops where it was all like she wouldn't let me negotiate with customers. She would like if she still won't. She won't. But if somebody came in and she wasn't there. And literally, we'd get like a, a piece of furniture we found in an alley and stripped it. I'm picturing Eartha Kitt in Ernest Scared Stupid. Oh my I haven't God. Seen the, do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, Earth? yeah. But we weren't, we were not allowed to negotiate. So if, it was like 200 bucks. <sighs> and then there was incense, and the incense was 15. And the person goes like, 200 bucks would throw in the incense. <gasps> and if I, at 15, if I went like, you got a fucking deal. My mom would go you were and Joe go, Pesci when you were little. I've Still always is. been Joe Pesci. Oh, okay. yeah. It's okay. gonna make sense when I'm like 65. Okay, okay. Uh, but I would get in trouble. So in terms of like this game, the business and the grind of it, I think, is like such an exciting part of it. Yeah. And so the sketch and improv world, once I started realizing, like, you got a seven year deal, you're not making money ever. And like, oh, it, like at SNL, but all the like that whole world. That's not true. You make like forty two hundred dollars an episode on SNL. <laughs> Congratulations. It's like actually pretty good. You can start making Congrats. more too if you're there for a while. But I started doing- when I, I think was, if you're there for 25 years, you get 7,000. You become Lauren. <laughs> but yeah. when I was doing UCB, I started doing the same character rather than doing a bunch of different characters because it was playing. Joe Pesci. Kinda. Yeah. I had a big mustache at the time. So every character, like Berg used to do food. Yep. I would always go out there and go like, what are you talking about? Well, you used to have the mustache and it really booked you gigs. Oh, I remember I when you- with that I mustache. remember one of the first commercial I saw you in after we became friends was a Tampax commercial yeah. where it was like- the They'll give everything of, to a straight white man. It's unbelievable. <laughs> well, no, Jake was not feeling fresh, but Jake was the bad tampon showing up yeah. for the date. I was the before. You were a tampon? No, he was himself, no. but he was manifested uh, to as a To die happy and come back as a tampon. <laughs>
Honestly, I, if I seen if, some shit. If I could have one dream, it would be to be a fucking tampon. <laughs> Wait, that's like what? Remember the the phone call between the Prince Charles and um Camilla? Oh my god! They leaked a phone call between them, and he, he was, was like, saying, I'd, love, I, "I'd love to be your tampon." He literally oh. said, "If I came back in another life, I'd love to be a tampon Shows or a maxi pad." Never been a regular person. Yes. Did you ever work with Sarah Silverman? Have you ever done anything? I just with her? did a show with her this week. Did you tell her? Was it a trip? I couldn't tell her. I couldn't yeah, tell her. Were you in your her. head? Were you like, what the fuck is going on? I did catch myself looking at her in a way that was like, I could tell if yeah. someone else was watching me watch her, it would look insane. So I was trying to play it cool and like break eye contact sometimes. Yeah. yeah. But it was difficult. Yeah, it's really strange. I just love her. I just her. did that with Bob Odenkirk. I was going to say, Odenkirk with Dave Cross. Was my, he was my yeah. guy. Oh, really? Yeah, Mr. Show for me was Same. everything. That was the show we all copied, and I did the sketch fest with him and Naomi, and we were walking back, and I just did that thing where I just like stared at him, and I'm like, you're just that thing. Wow. But question for you, and then we'll let you go, because uh, I first found you when you did that Charlie and the Chocolate Factory bit. Oh, yeah. What was that? You just decided, like, she did a bit on, did you see this No. Thing? I had no idea who you were. I'm not, I don't do any of the comedy theaters anymore. So I've missed like all the generations coming up. She made a video where it was a first person thing where she was talking about people who visited her on set and how they got out of control and how rude it was. <laughs> but you played I it. I do know what this is. So you played that it. That is so, so that's her. fucking funny. I that's saw so it. That's so weird. No one had told me about it. It was one of those things <laughs> that like popped into my algorithm. I was judging you so bad i'm sure you were i thought you were just some actor uh -huh. and i was like this is what's fucking wrong with the new generation Boy. and you got emotional and your acting was really good so i believed you <laughs> and i was dumb enough i didn't put it together and then it was about like the last 10 seconds i'm like this is a fucking bit it was so subtly I bet perfect. a lot of people felt like that. I bet there were like people. Who I had didn't... people text me and go like, "Oh my god, just saw the video. Are you okay? <laughs> I'm yeah. so sorry." But I thought that's what launched you. So you were um, you had already tested. Things were already going for you. Yeah, I shot that when I was shooting a show in Toronto. So that's where I got the idea because I was like, "What if I brought so... people to the set?" That is so funny. It. I did not put that together. And then I'm buddies with uh, Jake Samansky from Jury Duty. I love. How Jake. was that for you? So, jury duty was my dream like it that's was. all i want to do is to just improvise yeah, forever yeah, yeah, yeah. you it's could tell best. i mean not I, as much little as i know i've seen the show and you can tell when you're doing your bit as that character how great you are at making all that shit up oh thank you it's my only thing i like to do and we did like you know we did a little rehearsal beforehand but it was so much like you know keep it chill and keep don't make it too crazy <laughs> or like funny or don't say anything like weird because it was so you know don't yeah. want to no one wants to be the one that like breaks the bit. No. But then as soon as it started, I was like, But you were like pushing it a little bit. <laughs> you were pushing it a little what bit. What are you gonna do? Call cut? And you could see his face. He's going like, Jesus Christ, this is fucking like insane what she's saying. But it's the same thing that why we were the Willy Wonka video yeah, works. Yeah. It's like all you simply need to get away with anything you want is two feet of blonde hair, and then people would start tuning you out immediately. <laughs> you what can a great say cover. the stupidest shit you want. <laughs> it's comedy camouflage. <laughs> yeah. It's so funny. Well, thanks for coming. You're really Yeah, funny. thanks so much, really Lisa. Thanks it. for having me, freaks. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> and we want to thank Dr. Fizz. <laughs> Drink them all six, baby. Drink them all six. Hey, everybody. Thank you guys for watching us on YouTube. Please. Like and subscribe so you don't miss any of this quality content. Ring, ring. Here to help, go ahead. Oh my God. Damn. Cut. That was a HeadGum Podcast. <laughs> <laughs>